Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the first uh, open consultation process uh, meeting, hybrid meeting. Um, every VISIS forum has a consultative process where we develop the agenda and the uh, program of the event um, and uh, basically highlight the priorities for the event. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we have only one hour, and uh, we will start by short introductory remarks uh, by the co-organizers, uh, and then the co-hosts, uh, Switzerland. Um, I have a short presentation to update you on uh, the plans till now, and then we'll open up the floor, and as usual, we expect uh, uh, to receive some comments from you all. It's a consultative process, so uh, this is more to listen uh, from all stakeholders. So um, uh, our Secretary General uh, of ITU uh, had to leave yesterday, so I do have a video from our Deputy Secretary General, and I'd like to request our colleagues from the logistics team to please uh, play it. Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, for 20 years now, the World Summit on the Information Society, a WISIS process, has been an important global platform for digital cooperation and development standing the test of time. As the SDG Acceleration Agenda, recently released by YES together with UNDP and other partners demonstrate, 70% of SDG targets could be boosted by digital technologies. And such a boost is desperately needed. At the bit midpoint of the implementation of the Sustainable Development Agenda, we find it woefully off track. And the climate crisis is becoming a reality through scorching heat, wildfires and floods that we have to reckon with. The WISIS process plays a key role in harnessing the collective energy of the vast variety of stakeholders to enable harnessing the power of digital for the benefit of the humanity and the planet. As we embark on the WISIS Plus 20 process, this first meeting of the high-level event open consultation process is an invaluable opportunity to collectively gather inputs and perspectives that will help shape preparation and program of our WISIS Plus 20 high-level event, which is a special edition of the annual WISIS Forum and will take place next year. The event will be held from 27th to 31st of May 2024 and will be co-hosted by the Confederation of Switzerland in Geneva. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Switzerland for co-hosting the event and to Ambassador Thomas Schneider for his leadership and commitment to the WISIS process. Outcomes of this open consultation process will also contribute to the overall review of the implementation of WISIS Plus 20 outcomes by the UN General Assembly in 2025. We also hope that such outcomes will be found useful in the context of broader discussions on our digital future, including in terms of the next year's Summit of the Future and development of the Global Digital Compact. Your voices matter. The strengths of the WISIS Forum lies in its truly inclusive and multi-stakeholder nature. The consultative meeting is a testament to the enduring spirit of WISIS, where diverse voices converge to shape policies, strategies, and initiatives that will define our digital future. It's an invitation to collaborate, innovate, and work together towards a more inclusive and equitable information and knowledge societies. Your active participation and valuable insights are integral in ensuring that WISIS remains at the forefront of addressing the evolving challenges and opportunities in the era of digital transformation. As the WISIS Plus 20 review draws near, it is crucial for all stakeholders, including governments, civil society, the private sector, technical community, academia, regional international organizations, to come together. We also appreciate the close collaboration among UN agencies, UNESCO, UNDP, UNCTAD, CSTD, and UNDESA, which highlights our unified joint approach and shared commitment towards the WISIS Plus 20 review. I'm confident that the spirit of collaboration and partnership that has defined WISIS will continue to steer us towards progress. Thank you for your commitment as we continue to build on the foundation established over the previous two decades. I encourage you to actively engage in the OCP, or Open Consultation Process, by participating in consultative meetings and submitting input through your official submission form. 
I look forward to the productive discussions and outcomes that will emerge from our collective efforts. Together, we can build a world where technology serves as a force for good and where information and knowledge societies truly empower every individual. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to our Deputy Secretary General. Uh, you heard him right. This venue is basically to collect um, voices uh, of the civil society, private sector, technical community, of course, governments, UN agencies. Uh, we see all our partners uh, here. Um, and I'd like to uh, pass on uh, the mic to our uh, co-organizers, starting with uh, UNESCO. Pratik is representing UNESCO today uh, for very short um, uh, remarks on what their expectations are of the event next year. Thanks, Kitanjali, and I'll be very short. We have only one hour. Uh, so just to outline that um, UNESCO is also looking towards uh, VISIS 2.0, and uh, we've been working to strengthen the, the mandate that we had from VISIS um, around internet governance with the Rome principles, but also with the UNESCO General Conference adopting, uh, endorsing <coughs> information as a public good, the Windu Plus 30 declaration, uh, to strengthen media pluralism and uh, independence and uh, transparency of digital platforms, which was again uh, guidelines which were developed, which have been developed and uh, were consulted upon actively with the multi-stakeholder community this year. We're also working to strengthen mis uh, media and information literacy in view of the challenges of disinformation, misinformation, and hate speech online. The programs on open solutions and uh, what we are now calling digital public goods uh, are an active part of UNESCO's mandate with uh, the recommendation on open science, which was adopted in 2019, in, and the recommendation on open educational resources, which have now vibrant dynamic coalitions functioning. Um, we'll briefly mention two more things. The recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence, which is now a global standard and the only one which has been adopted by 193 countries and is informing global discussions on this important topic. In the field of culture, UNESCO is advancing uh, substantial discussions on regulation, but also supporting artists. And there was the UNESCO Mondial Cult uh, World Conference, which was organized uh, in 2022. Finally, uh, we have been working on digital capacity building of public administrations, as was also highlighted in the uh, in the Secretary General's uh, roadmap on digital cooperation, but also the recent policy papers on GDC. And in this regard, as part of the VISIS process from UNESCO, in addition to the, the VISIS forum, we will be organizing a major conference on, um, on this in 2025 from uh, in February. And the theme would be on uh, digital governance and digital transformation, empowering civil servants. I will stop here now and pass the mic back to you. Uh, thank you, Pratik. Uh, I'll invite Shamika from uh, UNCTAD. Uh, Shamika. Thank you. Thank you, Vitanjali. Uh, uh, good morning to all of you. Oh, oh. So good to see all of you. I think many faces I see at the CSTD. Uh, so on behalf of UNCTAD and our co-facilitators of the VCS Action Line on e-business, that means the ITC, the International Trade Center, the Universal Postal Union, uh, so a big welcome to all of you for being here. Let me highlight two things. First, as Gitanjali, you started saying, we have begun the VCS Plus 20 process. The CSTD has been asked to you know, begin the process. So we had our very first consultation here in this IGF, and I think it's, it's, it's very fitting to do that, to begin the process here, and we had a very good and energetic and a very insightful session yesterday. And we will continue this, and we will continue this in the, in, in the, in the vein of multi-stakeholderism, which was, as Peter, you mentioned, which was born, given birth to in the UN system in VCIS process, and we would make sure that it is the case as we review the VCIS Plus 20 process. So be, uh, you know, be aware of this, uh, the, the, the events that we will be holding in, in, in regions, with the, especially with the regional commissions, or with the IGF uh, regional forums. And here I also want to say that we have issued a questionnaire, we meaning all of us, ITU, UNESCO, UNCTAD, 
uh, a UNDP, DESA, we have issued a questionnaire to gauge the views of key stakeholders on how far we have come from the Tunis aspiration of people-centered, inclusive, and development-oriented information society, and how far we have to go to fulfill that aspiration. So please take note of this questionnaire, and please you know, you know, give it to all your networks, and get us data so that we can have a very meaningful uh, uh, you know, review done that to, that to send to the General Assembly. Now on the action lines, let me just very quickly say from UNCTAD perspective, our mandate is basically to leverage international trade for development. And we have done a lot of work. We are working on developing develop, uh, you know, countries' uh, readiness for e-commerce and the uh, uh, digital economy. We have done uh, about 39, 40 countries' uh, diagnostics. Are they ready to engage in the e-commerce? And we assess this uh, readiness on various uh, policy measures. We look at the connectivity, look at the regulatory frameworks, the e-payment systems, logistics, skills, finance, and so forth. And, uh, and we find many developing countries, I think the vast majority of developing countries, almost all LDCs, are not ready to engage in e-commerce and the digital economy. And this, so we are quite concerned, this massive technological revolution would yet again bypass them. So there are, it's not just uh, issues, are not just connectivity issues, there are issues are, you know, multifaceted, issues of the re uh, inadequate legal regulatory frameworks, inadequate e-payment system, especially if you want to do exports, and inadequate logistics uh, facilities, especially if you want to do exports, because everybody wants to get your goods fast, because that's the digital uh, commerce. So there will be, and, and what we also found is that we cannot, one agency cannot do it all together. We, we at UNCTAD, we cannot do the regulatory systems, the e-payment systems, the skills, the finance, and the gender aspects and all that. So we have created a very, very uh, f effective platform called E-Trade for All platform. And 35 agencies are working with us, meaning who is who in, uh, in e-commerce and the digital economy are part of it. So if, for example, if a country asks us they'd want to do more on e-payment systems, we, for example, would invite the World Bank to undertake that work. And many countries ask us, you know, their post offices are not ready to do small parcels. We work with the UPU to do that work. So that's how we work. And the platform is a real, a true, uh, you know, this is something that we aspire here in the VCs Forum. Mm -hmm. So everyone, so note that e we are going to have an E-Week in Geneva, and it's the week of December 4th, and it is called the Shaping the Future, and it is about the, you know, entering the digital economy, capturing the gains for digital economy for developing countries. So having said that, and thank you so much, Geetanjali, and uh, thank you that we all, you all see that we are all together in this journey, the UN family, and you will see as we go for the V6 Plus 20 review, we will go as one UN. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shamika. Um, uh, Rob? Yes, very quickly. I, I actually would just maybe, um, I know Thomas has set a little bit of the context, but just a little bit more on that. Um, we are definitely at a pivotal moment, moment for the role of ICTs and digital technologies for the future of humanity. I think that's not an overstatement. Um, this year we had the SDG summit, so we're halfway through um, the SDG period, and we I think there's broad recognition of the role that digital technologies can play in accelerating our progress. Um, to that end, we, together with ITU, uh, released a report called the SDG Digital Acceleration Agenda and celebrated that day the various ways in which um, technology can really help us get to the SDGs. This also comes in the run-up to the Global Digital Compact process and the Summit of the Future next year. So the role of WISIS in this is really important and we have a very strong opportunity to leverage the platform that is there to feed into the global digital compact to follow the process after the global digital compact and be really a platform where um, the world comes together to look at how does this how does this actually work how does this actually get done 
So that's what we're looking forward to. And, and with um, UNDP is pleased to uh, co-chair the uh, UN Group on Inform Information Society this year and work together with our co-organizers, -org UNCTAD, UNESCO. Um, on this, we are, as Shamika said, we are acting as one on this. We see nobody can do this alone, so we work together. And we also look at how do we extend this platform and go through the WISIS plus 20 process and really come out the, the other end with, I can't remember who said WISIS 2.0, maybe it was you, Pratik. Um, and just uh, also just to say a, a, a wonderful thanks to the government of Switzerland for hosting the WISIS Forum um, this year, and we're really looking forward to this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Rob, uh, representing UNDP. Uh, so we are about to start with our uh, updates and uh, preparatory process for the uh, high-level event next year. But we also have Ambassador Schneider with us uh, from Switzerland. Uh, so Ambassador Schneider, what are, uh, you know, what can people expect next year? <laughs> How should we prepare? Yes, thank you. And uh, sometimes I think that the more difficult question than what, how will AI change all our lives is how will the VCs plus 20 process look like? And people keep asking themselves and each other questions. And uh, I must say it's complicated. Uh, and and um, it was much easier 20 years ago. At, uh, 20 years ago at this time, we were negotiating the, the Geneva Declaration and the Geneva Plan of Action. And that was the only thing there was. There was no structure, there was nothing. There was just the VCs process. and and based based on, on a number of UN institutions and other players, but that was it. And now the world has become much more complicated. We already have hundreds of events and structures and parallel structures and overlapping structures. But on the other hand, this is, this is life, that's diversity. So we may not get all the answers today. I don't think anyone has them because there's so many players, but, but I think it is also just reality that there are several, several tracks and it helps, I think, and this is one of the key points why we are still very much uh, supportive uh, of, of the WISIS process, because in order to make all possible voices heard, one, a one-size-fits-all uh, solution, one track may not be enough. So we, we, we don't have a problem, per se, with the fact that we, there are several tracks, there are several things going on at the same time. Of course, it would be nice to, to see how this all fits together. And, and uh, for us, um, it is important that we have a discussion in New York, in the UN, in the General Assembly, but this is definitely a very, um, a very uh, uh, government-led uh, space, which is necessary, which is important, but which needs to be complemented by other processes that are uh, more, uh, let's say, balanced towards stakeholder participation. And for us, really, the WISIS process has been a milestone in broadening up the space in the UN and, and building bridges to, to other, other stakeholders like it, it not, didn't really uh, exist before, at least not in the areas that, that I know. And I think also the ITU, uh, UNESCO and, 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 and all the other institutions have been able to develop with the WISIS process to become more inclusive, to try and give more voices to, to stakeholders from all over the world that have not been heard before. And basically the key for us is that, that we continue to use the WISIS process and the IGF, which for us is also part of the WISIS process, has been created to bring voices in, to make sure that decisions that are taken, no matter where they are taken, are as respectful as possible of all the issues, all the needs of all the, the people in, in the world. And so this is why we are still very committed to, to the WISIS process, to support the actors that are driving the process, and, and we're happy to, to be the co-host of, of the next year. It's gonna, again, probably be a complicated week because it's sh a shared week with the AI for Good Summit, uh, and not everything there is clear either, so don't expect uh, too clear answers, neither from the ITU nor from anybody else. We're all, I think, working on it, each, each of us with our capabilities. Um, you will hear more details about what is planned for, for the VC Plus 20 high-level forum. Um, and I would uh, stop here because actually this is to uh, also listen to expectations uh, so that uh, the actors can actually uh, build on what they are expected to do and, and try to live up to the expectations, which is a very challenging thing probably. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Ambassador Schneider. Um, so um, I'll start with my short presentation. Uh, of course, this is the UN process. Uh, we work with more than 32 UN agencies. I can see many of our friends here, FAO, uh, UN DESA, and uh, quite a few of them. So thank you very much for being here. In 2015, we aligned the WISIS action lines with the Sustainable Development Goals uh, to highlight the clear linkages of digital um, accelerating the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, you're very familiar with the matrix. Uh, so a slide with the timeline for those of you who are new here, but I doubt if anyone is new, <laughs> all familiar faces. Uh, so basically, um, uh, we've uh, put it together until the uh, UNGA high-level meeting in 2025. Uh, these slides will be available, so please uh, feel free to look at the website later. Uh, so also the uh, VISIS Plus 20 review process, what are the expectations from the UN agencies, from multi-stakeholders, that of course it should be a multi-stakeholder process. Um, uh, we have to ensure, as I'm as De Schneider said that though um, a process will take place uh, in the overall review in the UNGA, but there have to be avenues for collecting the voices of the civil society, academia, uh, and all stakeholders. Um, strengthen digital collaboration. So you heard from our co-organizers, we are working very closely, ITU, UNESCO, UNDP, uh, CSTD, UNDESA in particular, who have a clear mandate to implement the WISIS uh, process, uh, 20 years of implementation. Uh, we did hear a lot of people talking about uh, uh, achievements in these 20 years, so it's really important that uh, we capture these achievements. And of course, uh, uh, outcome uh, uh, expectation would be that uh, it's a multi-stakeholder outcome on a vision of VISIS uh, beyond 2025. And we hope, do hope that this is submitted to the summit of the future and endorsed during the higher level uh, meeting uh, in 2025. So uh, 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 brainstorming that has been uh, happening, uh, you also saw Shameka present this uh, during the CSTD session. Uh, so there are, of course, the SDG summit already happened uh, where we um, contributed as the SDG uh, digital, uh, Rob mentioned it, uh, highlighting the importance of digital preceding the ONGA. Um, 2023 Japan phase is the IGF. We have heard several discussions on the WISIS Plus 20 review process and the future. Um, regional reviews, uh, I, uh, our colleagues are sitting and we'd encourage you to uh, take the floor later. Uh, SCAP is doing one in Armenia. ECA uh, is scheduled to do one soon. ESQA in February 2024. Uh, Geneva phase, uh, Ambassador Schneider mentioned it briefly. Um, and then we do expect that um, the summit of the future captures uh, some of the outcomes of all these phases that uh, we've been working towards. Uh, Paris phase, uh, uh, Pratik did mention it, uh, UNESCO, 18 to 28 February 2025. Uh, Tunisia uh, would like to um, uh, host, though it's not confirmed, they would like to host a session on VISIS Plus 20 in Tunisia. Uh, CSTD review takes place in April 2025, the official one that Shamika mentioned. Um, 2025 VISIS forum uh, may happen in uh, uh, UAE, it's still not uh, confirmed, and then eventually it all finishes at the uh, high level uh, meeting, which takes place uh, in the Onga. So uh, moving now to the uh, high level event, uh, the VISIS Forum uh, high level event will take place uh, uh, from the 27th to 31st of May. So please uh, mark this on your calendar. And as Ambassador Schneider mentioned, uh, we are doing it uh, in collaboration with the AI for Good Summit. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we will be in the CICG. And uh, Thursday, Friday, we come to the ITU premises. Um, AI for Good will take place uh, in the CICG. So there are very clear two processes for AI for Good and WISIS. So uh, we will uh, make sure that um, the linkages um, and wherever we are trying to save resources, we are highlighting all of that. However, it's very clear that there are two independent meetings and uh, processes. Um, so uh, the open consultative process, uh, today is the first meeting. 13th of December, we'll have one in uh, Geneva, 
uh, Switzerland. So we do hope to see all of you there as well. And um, the final briefing will take place on the 15th of uh, February. And 26th of March, uh, we plan to do a special session with uh, Ambassador Schneider's leadership and uh, uh, the chair of the uh, WISIS uh, Plus 20 Forum High Level event. The open consultation process, you're familiar with it. It's an online form. Uh, so those of you already have an account, uh, you don't need to create an old one. Uh, we've developed the website in a way that your details are recorded there. Those of you who don't have a form, you'll have to create a, a web um, uh, account for yourself. Uh, the preparatory process, uh, it's the same. Um, you fill up through the form. We have an open consultation process and also multi-stakeholder discussions to elaborate the uh, outcome of the uh, meeting. So we have the written inputs, uh, the 20-year reports, also the CSTD uh, form, the 20-year VSIS action line reports, which we are working with the UN action line facilitators for, uh, linkages with the partner to connect, UN high impact initiatives, uh, and so on and so forth. High level track participation, we are uh, working with Ambassador Schneider and his team uh, to explore the participation of heads of states. Uh, so those of, who, uh, of you who are interested, please do get in touch with us and we will make sure that we enable this participation. Ministers, of course, we nearly have more than 80 ministers at the WISIS Forum. However, we'd like to make it cross-sectoral. So if you have ministers of uh, environment, of uh, climate, of education, uh, it It'll be really great if we can have a cross-sectoral uh, discussion amongst the ministers and the ministerial. Uh, ambassadors, uh, mayors, we initiated a discussion on smart cities with mayors and uh, local um, uh, chiefs. Uh, this was really a very interesting discussion um, uh, and they were able to share a lot of ideas because not all cities are as advanced in, uh, as, as the others. Uh, heads of UN agencies and international organizations. Um, we were approached by some parliamentarians who would like to do some activities there, CEOs, civil society leaders, and uh, of course, it will all have remote participation uh, as well. Uh, agenda and program, uh, we develop it through a consultative format. So uh, we are, of course, still developing it, but just to share the structure and the skeleton, uh, the high-level track, workshops, of course, all interactive, uh, civil society, private sector consultations. Uh, we were approached by many young people to ensure that the youth track is maintained. So the last day will be mostly focusing on youth track activities um, with the convergence with the AI for Good Summit. So AI Governance Day, most probably on Wednesday. Uh, the WISIS plus 20 track, uh, UN consultations, and the academia uh, track. Um, so there are several other calls for action. You know that we have beautiful photographs from the ground that are submitted by you every year. Uh, and these are free for use by all of you. So if you want to use them for your presentations, your um, uh, you know, uh, uh, websites, you can just write to us and uh, take them from there. Uh, the WISIS Digital Service Design Special Prize, which we launched last year. The WISIS Healthy Aging Innovation Prize, which focuses on uh, healthy aging and is aligned with the, um, uh, with the uh, with WHO's Decade of Healthy Aging. Uh, we will have an exhibition space, and uh, as you've seen, uh, we are extra budgetary, so it's a very humble exhibition space. Uh, it's not very fancy, but of course it does the job. You have your uh, area to talk about your projects and to interact with all participants. The call for WISIS stock taking database will be launched soon, and WISIS prizes. I can see many winners here, so please make sure that you also uh, start applying for the WISIS prizes very soon. Um, like I mentioned, WISIS Forum is completely extra budgetary, so we really appreciate the contributions we receive from you every year. Uh, so please do write to us if uh, you're interested in partnering with us. Uh, currently, all the packages are uh, open. So thank you very much. Uh, I'd now like to open the floor. This was just to provide some updates. Um, uh, it, please do raise your hand and we'll just share the mic with you. So there are some roving mics, and there is one uh, mic uh, there at the audience uh, space as well. So, sure, Professor Brooke, over to you. 
Thank you very much, Tishangli. Uh, I'm the chairman of the World Summit Awards, and we have since 2003, every year, um, presented uh, the best practices uh, globally from uh, how digital technologies are used for a positive social impact. Uh, we are very happy to contribute also uh, to the business review and uh, to the events there. I want to recall for those of you who have been in 2003 and 2005 in Geneva and in Tunis that we had uh, very spectacular events uh, showing the creative side of using digital technology with a positive social impact. And I think it's very important to see that this is actually a bottom-up view from the creative side regarding what they can contribute, what is contributed from all around the world. WSA is now present in 182 countries. In terms of how to transform and meet the challenges of today and offer very concrete solutions. That is very important in so far as in the business uh, action lines, uh, there's a specific paragraph and also emphasis on local content and on local impact. And I think it's very important that we look at this through a procedure as uh, the WSA, which is a multi-stakeholder initiative. There are two things which I think is important uh, in addition to this kind of offer of collaboration and input. It is that I think that uh, we have, uh, and this speaks very much to Ambassador Schneider's uh, point regarding that uh, there are hundreds of events and uh, many different kind of issues, I think that uh, from our point of view and from civil society point of view, it would be very good to set and focus and prioritize what VISIS wants to do in comparison and in conjunction with other issues. So you have said um, yourself that there is the AI for Good Summit. I think that it's very important that we deal with the AI issues there and we deal with other issues at VISIS. What are these other issues? Uh, in the Tunis Action Plan, there are three issues which uh, have lost, have been lost in terms of the site of the business process. And I talked yesterday already at uh, uh, another session about this, uh, the focus that we have lost very much is the focus on knowledge society and the transformation. And I think it's absolutely essential that we focus on this in terms of all the related issues regarding uh, skills, competences, democratic participations, um, the people's ability to deal personally and also communally with the challenges of today and in the near future. The other things which I think is very important is the entire media agenda. And I think it's very important here that we also deal with the economics of uh, the digital transformation. And I think the devastation of the traditional media, the legacy media, and the fragmentation in terms of the public sphere is something which needs to be as a topic. And the third one is, I think uh, we have as an action line uh, under the number D, the entire agenda on digital solidarity and also the digital solidarity fund and the issues there in terms of funding certain kind of uh, aspects and having an equitable, I mean, uh, also way of looking at uh, that uh, we close digital divides this way. I think that is a political agenda and I will push very much that the European Union will act also put this on the agenda because I think it's very important that European Union countries speak with one voice on the United Nations level on that issue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Brook, and thank you for the great collaboration WSA has with us. Uh, in fact, uh, quite a few of your uh, community were uh, applicants to the uh, SDG Digital Game Changers Award. Uh, so yes, thank you for this great collaboration. Um, I, APC has raised their hand. Uh, chat, APC. Thank you very much, Itanjali. It is uh, really encouraging to see uh, the room full in order to 
shape the future together. This is Valeria Betancourt from the Association for Progressive Communications. At, as it has been pointed out, so much has changed since the WCS and since the 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 ten day, the ten year review. Uh, uh, in the preparations for the for this review of the 20 years of the WCS, uh, obviously we will have to deal with the implications of those changes that are not a few, are many, and also with the reinterpretation of the WCS vision in order to respond you know, to this uh, constantly changing environment of the digital society that we have today. And obviously there are also uh, um, unquestionably remaining challenges from the um, uh, from the WCIS Plus 10 review that persists until the, the current time, such as inclusion and equality, and something that we are calling the, 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 the digital in inequality paradox. Uh, as more people are connected, digital inequality is amplified and increasing and getting more sophisticated. So what are the long-term opportunities and also the risks in areas that are critical today, such as digital rights, such as the environmental crisis and environmental sustainability, but also sustainable development, digital inclusion itself, cybersecurity, surveillance, concentration of corporate power, among others. The underlying question, in our view, uh, that should guide the preparations of the, for the WCS Plus 20 uh, at the end of the day uh, is what do we want to achieve? Uh, what do we want to go? In, in, what, uh, in which direction? What type of digital society we want? And also what we need to build it, including financial resources, the financial resources that we need to really build the type of digital future that we want to address that uh, systemic and structural challenges that we uh, are still facing. So at the practical level, it is also very important in our view that we identified what will contribute to reach compromise during the WCS Plus 20 review, what type of process has to be in place and what type of inputs are needed to contribute to arrive to those agreements to build on processes that uh, um, help us to um, address this uh, uh, widened scope of policy uh, issues that we have today. So what are the conditions that have to be in place for coming up with the uh, outcomes that balance the difference uh, the differences of power, not only between uh, stakeholders, but also within uh, stakeholders uh, and uh, the contesting parties, as well as the multiplicity of interest. Uh, we also seeing that, uh, in particular, the, the WCS Plus 20 uh, review process should be used to contribute to the strengthening of the mandate of the Internet Governance Forum. Uh, and and it's, uh, the role that it, it has to operationalize global digital cooperation and bridge the gap between the decision-making spaces and the multi-stakeholder ones. Uh, and then uh, to take it as a very unique opportunity to place global digital cooperation towards global and contextual responses that are needed and to put those issues at the top of the political agendas to, uh, in order to address uh, the, the, the challenges that we face today. APC is looking forward to continue contributing to not only the implementation of the WCS action, action lines, but to commit to, to the review in all its phases and to um, bring our contingency to uh, shape the digital future that we want together. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Valeria, and thanks to APC for galvanizing action uh, around civil society for so many years. Uh, you were also the nodal civil society uh, uh, a group which uh, got the voices together in 2003. So we do hope that the, uh, this will continue. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, Justin from USA has raised his hand. US? Yeah, Justin Fair, <coughs> US uh, Department of State. Um, First off, just uh, thank you all for this, um, for Gitanjali for organizing this, and uh, Ambassador Schneider and the Swiss government for, for coming along to host this year, but all the other UN agencies that are here. I think that over the past year, uh, to the point the Ambassador made about all the various processes, there has been a lot of concern just about uh, the system is kind of overwhelmed, uh, and that we really need to avoid duplication of effort, find synergies, do better at digital cooperation. I really like that term, digital cooperation. And I think you see it um, here, here this morning 
um, within the WSIS process and for the WSIS review of a great deal of coordination. And I, I want to commend that because um, I think it shows a, a maturity and a strengthening of the WSIS process that wasn't always there, um, but I think is there now. And, and hopefully that will lead to a, um, a, a good outcome this year. Uh, I will say I think that um, the WSIS Plus Forum is a really good opportunity to do what we often talk about taking stock. I mean, born out of the meeting of the Action Line facilitators, as we kind of look to the future, it's really important that first we have that kind of understanding of what has worked, what progress has been made, where there were challenges, um, you know, what, what, what was done and tried, what worked, what didn't. And that's part of the review process, that first step to really kind of understand how we got to where we are. And then we kind of look to like, okay, then what comes next, how we can put the whole system together. So really look forward to this meeting, this engagement. I do have two questions just from the, uh, the briefings this morning. One uh, for our colleagues from UNESCO, the conference on in, in early, I think February 2025, um, just if there's any more information about what that is, is that envisioned as part of the WSIS uh, plus 20 review, kind of like the connecting the dots or something, uh, any information about that? And then also just logistics on um, pushing two meetings together in the same week in Geneva, uh, how that's going to work. Uh, for those that have been there, there's a lot that come to both. I'm sure there's overlap, but there's, uh, it, it's a lot of folks descending on one little area in Geneva. Same venue, different venues, kind of how that's going to be managed. Any information there uh, mm -hmm. for planning purposes I think would be very helpful. Thanks. So thanks for that question. Actually, it's part of the the discussions at the UNESCO General Conference, which will take place in November, and it's part of the the draft resolution uh, so far. So it is for VISIS, uh, uh, VISIS discussions, part of the roadmap, as Kitanjali had highlighted. But we are also bringing a more thematic focus to that conference to focus on capacity building in public administrations, focusing on the challenges that we are seeing around digital transformation, digital governance. And uh, so to, to bring all the stakeholders, partners around the table, yesterday we had the discussion around launching an IGF dynamic coalition on digital capacity building. So it's really also going to be a multi-stakeholder endeavor which will feed into some of the VISIS action lines. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Justin. So as Ambassador Schneider said, we are still figuring out the logistics, but uh, of course the venues will be next to each other, so CICG and ITU. Um, and like I mentioned, the way we are planning it is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, VISIS will be in CICG, the high level component. And then we come back to ITU for uh, Thursday, Friday, which would be more of uh, workshops and exhibitions and things like that. Um, and uh, uh, the AI for Good takes place only for two days, so Thursday, Friday, they're going to be there. So we will uh, try to make sure that uh, we are aligned and uh, we keep taking uh, suggestions from you to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, smooth and you're able to participate. Um, uh, sir, yes, please, uh, Justin, do you have the mic here? Yeah, if you could please introduce yourself, sir. Thank you. Uh, Byron Holland from CIRA. We're the operators of the .ca country code top level domain and we also do a lot of work in the cybersecurity and DNS fields on behalf of others. Uh, thank you very much for this presentation. I think many of us have been trying to understand what the process looks like and, and definitely, uh, certainly to my mind, charts and graphs and linear timelines make sense. So thank you very much for helping bring this into focus. Uh, the one thing that I couldn't help but noticing a couple of slides back was the agenda uh, and the different um, different groups that were be that were going to be part of the process. Uh, no surprise, I was quite struck by the absence of the technical community. So when I looked at the agenda and all the communities involved, the technical community, the folks who in general actually run the internet are missing from that. And I would suggest strongly that you would want to include that community um, as one of the key actors and one of the key stakeholders in the process. Because we are very different from academia. We are not per se civil society. Some of us are for profit. Many of us are not for profit type entities. It's a distinct community. Thank you. 
uh, thank you Brian for highlighting that uh, basically it's a uh, it's a uh, human error <laughs> that's it in one slide because in the rest of the slides you will see that technical community is very prominently featured uh, this was a couple of years back where uh, we were basically um, decided all of us together that uh, civil society and technical community should be a different uh, category uh, and it has been so ever since so thank you very much for highlighting that and I'll change it um, Nigel from uh, UK Nigel does it work I think you have to switch it on, Nigel, uh, from the top. Right. There is a. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> after yesterday, uh, uh, Nigel Hickson from the uh, UK government. I mean, just f first of all, to echo what was uh, said yesterday during the UN uh, CSTD session, and what's been said this morning. You know the f the focus on the WSIS Plus Twenty review process is is is, is clearly very important. Uh, the roadmap towards the UN GA discussions is is is, is complicated and like Byron, it's good to see a a, a, a timeline uh, for these discussions. Uh, we're very much focused on the on the process, and that the process includes all stakeholders and a diverse range of regions and that everyone has an opportunity to contribute to this process ahead of the UN GA discussions. And, and for us it's very important that the uh, UN CSTD produces this report which was discussed yesterday which will not only look at where we've come from perhaps in the last 20 years but will look to the future. Because I think for, for many of us the future is, 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 is what's in important how the WSIS, WSIS 2.0 I uh, you know this is a new term but I mean you know whatever you know can 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 come out if you like from those UNGA discussions and, and, and can emerge and for us it's very important that we focus on what is important to bridge the connectivity gap to do what many people have been talking about at this IGF to do a lot more uh, in, in terms of evolving the WSIS action lines so they help complement the sustainable development goals so there's a clear linkage between that, uh, between those goals and the matrix of course that was developed in 2015 was Im important in that, uh, in, that, in that regard. So I think that you know, there, there are some real important steps that have to be taken. In, 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 terms, of the, uh, in, in, in terms of the WSIS forum next year, uh, clearly important to have this WSIS plus 20 high level track but I think it, it has to be uh, it has to be prepared well if we're going to have our ministers to come to Geneva to discuss these issues then there has to be some sort of preparation in in, in advance so they know what uh, they know what they're going to uh, 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 discuss but you know, clearly important it's really good to hear that UNESCO are, are, are doing something many of us Remember joining the dots. I think it was joining the dots, wasn't it? Joining, connecting the dots. Oh, connecting the not <laughs> connecting the dots. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but I I mean that was a very uh, you know significant event, and the work that UNESCO has done on multilingualism is I think another important factor uh, that perhaps will feature at uh, the WSIS forum next May, and that brings to an extent in the technical community and the work that's been done at ICANN and in other areas to develop international domain names, to further multilingualism, to look at universal acceptance. And that, in terms of you know, the evolving of the action lines to meet the sustainable development goals is, a, is an important factor. So thank you. Thank you very much, Nigel. Uh, Balzur, uh, is the mic somewhere there? Thank you very much, Balzur. Uh, very good morning. Uh, basically, uh, my name is A.S.M. Bozlur Rahman. I am working with uh, Bangladesh and News Network for radio and communication. Uh, basically, Bangladesh is one of the impact country of the WSIS action line uh, implementation, C1 to C11. So Bangladesh government and CSO, civil society organization, successfully uh, integrated 
uh, WSIS section line C1 to C11 with the five year plan and as well as digital Bangladesh process and smart Bangladesh process and as well as civil society organization intervention. As a result, Bangladesh government and civil society organization received lots of WSIS prizes as a winner and as a champion. Especially uh, my organization, Bangladesh and News Network for Radio and Communication received seven awards as a winner and as a champion. We need a, a WSIS forum annually. It is really multi-stakeholder manner. Now it is model of multi-stakeholder. We would appreciate uh, if the WSIS secretariat would publish a toolkit for parliamentarian and as well as mayor because I saw they have a parliamentarian track and also mayor track. We need uh, WSI section line localization, like uh, like a sub uh, like a sub regional basis uh, open consultation like South Asia because UN ASCAP is so far uh, from us. Uh, it is a mix of the South Asia and Southeast Asia, so we need a separate sub regional open consultation about uh, WSIS action line like South Asia and as well as country level open consultation. Open consultation is very important for reviewing the action line progress called C1 to C11. C9 is very important. UNESCO representative is here. Uh, it is real that community media sector is now under threat by the social media and also new tech. This is the reality. But community media needed for voices for the voiceless. It is only media ensuring voices for the voiceless from the ground. Finally, based on the WSIS multi-stakeholder experience, we have harmonized with the Global Digital Compact and as well as Summit of the Future. And we develop one initiative, two years initiative, basically called Bangladesh Initiative for Connecting, Empowering, and Amplifying Unified Voice on Global Digital Compact and UN Summit of the Future. Make Bangladesh voices heard at the GDC and as well as UN Summit of the Future. Thank you. Thank you, Baljur. Uh, Mr. Bertrand de la Chappelle, it's good to see you after a long time <laughs> uh, with you. Thank you very much. I'm Bertrand de la Chappelle. I'm the Executive Director of the Internet and Jurisdiction Policy Network and the Chief Vision Officer of the Data Sphere Initiative. It's great to be here, but I um, have to say that I may be a little bit uh, less diplomatic than I am usually. I have an intense frustration with the question of the WSIS plus 20. A deep frustration. As many of us have participated in the initial WSIS in 2003, 2005, there was a drive there. There was an ambition. There was a vision. People were thinking that there was a challenge at the time 20 years ago almost, that there was an information society in the coming and that it created a certain number of technical, social, but also political challenges. And that we needed to find a way to work together to address those challenges and make the best of the information society, which at the time was just ICT. We are 20 years later and in spite of all the amazing developments, the political landscape has become worse and worse. We are not able to address the challenges because there's a lack of cooperation internationally. We do not have the transnational institutions that are needed. The technical architecture and the technical governance architecture is functioning very well, thank you. During the pandemic, without the internet, the world wouldn't have been able to live and the technical community, which doesn't have basically the right to speak on the policy issues, is the one that managed the world to keep tight. Meanwhile, and I don't even talk about the environment of the political geopolitical battles, we're seeing an absolute lack of capacity to address the key challenges. And the Secretary General of the UN has rightly said that there are two existential crises. One is the climate crisis, and the other one is what is the digital society we want to build together? And here, when we're talking about the WSIS, 20 years 
is a nice anniversary. It's usually a coming, of, a coming of age party. And we're going backwards, just looking at the review. And don't get me wrong, a review is extremely important. What we've accomplished, what we've not accomplished, is important. I'm afraid that we're going to look too much at what we've accomplished and, not, and missing what we have not accomplished, which is a lot. We should have a little bit of self-criticism collectively. But what I would like is a term that I haven't heard in many years is what is our ambition? What do we collectively want to achieve together? And I want just to finish by saying for a year and a half, I participated in a few sessions regarding the WSIS Plus 20. I still don't know what it is. And Thomas was saying it. I think if it ends up being the equivalent of the WSIS Plus 10 review, a mere resolution in the UN General Assembly, we have missed a massive opportunity. So I would like to encourage everybody to think about this not as a WSIS Plus 20 review, but as 2025, as the moment where we, through all the different processes, think about what is the damn ambition that we want to have for cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much <laughs> for that <laughs> call for action. Uh, that was very much needed in this meeting. Uh, what is our ambition? So who's next? Uh, Peter, <laughs> the right person. <laughs> is there a mic there? No. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Bertrand. <laughs> <laughs> well, you rightly said, the 10-year review, which ended with the resolution, produced nothing. Well, that's not true. We have extended the mandate of the IGF. We have ex extended the mandate of, <coughs> of the business forum. That's true. However, there was no ambition. However, if I recall the CSTD report, which was a very short report of 300 pages, <laughs> we have already mentioned a lot of things. Does it ring a bell? AI social networks, IOT, everything was there. Everything in the report. Have you seen anything in the resolution? Nothing. We are going to do something very ambitious this time as well. As you said, we would like to outline the future. And I'm sure we are going to do that. Now, if we do our best, probably it won't be enough because the UN General Assembly will be very political. So what influence do we have? It's a question I, I don't have the answer. <laughs> I don't really have the answer, but we have to do our best. And I think what you said, we should be doing it and we are going to do it. Thank you, Peter. We look forward to your uh, guidance in this whole uh, process. And uh, Bertrand, uh, if you noticed, uh, we are trying to be slightly ambitious because in the timeline, we have made sure that the UNGA uh, is uh, involved in the whole preparatory process. And our colleagues from UNDESA are also present here. Uh, so we have one minute. Uh, we have a few remote participants. Uh, Professor Minkin uh, can hand you the floor. Uh, very quick comments. Remote participation, please. Um, logistics team, we have a remote participant. Uh, Professor Minkin, we are informed that you need to unmute yourself. Uh, we do not hear you. You can just unmute yourself and go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Th thank you very much, Gitanjali. Uh, good time of the day, dear colleagues. Uh, let me shortly, first of all, uh, 
I, I agree with uh, the last speakers, especially Nigel, uh, Bertrand, and Peter. And uh, I would only draw attention. Now our first meeting uh, for preparation. Uh, and main point, we should think what will be the outcome of this is plus 10 high level event. What we want from this outcome, in what form it will be this outcome, how we will prepare to this outcome. In all cases, what we should do, we should consider at least preliminarily 20 years view what was happened with each action line and define what we want from future. How we see the vision, this is beyond 2025. That we should prepare to that. It should be chance for multi-stakeholder estimation this and to receive multi-stakeholder view on the future. Future of VCs, future of SDGs, digital compact, and so on. That we expected from uh, this high-level forum, and I hope we should carefully prepare for that together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Minkin. The uh, logistics team is giving me an indication that we need to finish. Uh, there are a lot of hands up still. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of hand ups uh, still, but we continue on the 13th of December uh, in Geneva and virtually. So please join us. But Ambassador Schneider, you have a few last words. Well, just, just, and, and, Please, those that, that did not have the chance to comment, there, there are ways to contact us, to context, uh, contact uh, also the, the I2 and the UNESCO and, and us. Just one reaction, uh, uh, a brief one on, on, on Betro. Um, and it would be also nice to hear from younger people because we were maybe younger 20 years ago, but we are definitely not that young anymore now. But that's a side remark. Um, I think the world has changed. And because 20 years ago, it was 10 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, we were all hoping that the end of history would be uh, a nice thing and that the technology would help us to spread peace and freedoms and everything, and sharing was the word. Now we're in a different, not just geopolitical, but we're in a different environment. It's, it's not about sharing, it's about fighting. It's about winning or losing. We are back into some kind of middle age thing. Is like we cannot all win together. Okay, if so I we're win, gonna, you we're need to have lose. a discussion. No, on no, this but and we can just continue. to cut it short, <laughs> and that has an impact also on it us. Does. I think it is up to us to try to make the best out of it and reinterpret, as, as uh, uh, Valeria had said, like reinterpret the VC's vision in the times that we are now. They they are more difficult, but it's not the end of history. So it's also up on us to try and go back into the right direction. But it's difficult times, I but guess, But it's for precisely because of this environment that we need spaces to cooperate and bring the moderates together instead of being hostages by the extremes in all cases. On that note, <laughs> 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 we can have a fire-tied chat on that. <laughs>